here, that's going to give you a moment about the chosen point which happened to be A. So I could write that as a same moment, power point A, Q to force F, that's another vector, and that should add up to zero. So these are two equations, and both are in vectors. Then <coughs> this by itself, and if I look at the moment of the force about point A, there are two ways to handle it. <coughs> I could take this point, <coughs> I could take this point, and then join these two. So you'll have a vector going <coughs> A to B, R A B. And then this moment is going to be the product between vectors R A B and the force vector. That's one possibility. Or we could choose I mean, you don't have a choice on this, but you're taking more about this point. But you do have a choice on the force, which means I could choose any point along this line, which is known. So the second choice could be this, and you create a vector, call this as RAC. So the same thing could also be given by an equation where it goes RAC times F. And the reason you can afford to do this because you know the coordinates of point B as well as you know the coordinates of point C. <coughs> so that's all we need to solve this problem. The rest is all algebra because we already know this vector. We know this vector we need to write this in vector form and we need to find one of these products. So let's look at the force. Your force vector will be the force magnitude multiplied by a unit vector going from point P to C. And that's going to be 840 magnitude is known and a vector which is let's say PC divided by is magnitude. So <coughs> we need coordinates of point A that's all zeros then we need the coordinates of point B and <coughs> you would need the coordinates of point C. C is in X or Y plane, so the Z goes to zero. Then for X, it will be 15, and for the Y, it will be 10. So that's the coordinates of point C. Then for B, the height is 24, so Z coordinate, Z coordinate becomes 24. Then we're looking at the X. That's going to be 3, and the y should be 2. So that, that's what you get as the coordinates for point B. So this equation here is going to be 840. Since the vector goes from B to C, you've got to take the coordinates to C first. So you get 15, 10, and 0. You subtract the coordinates for B, so you get negative 3, negative 2, and <coughs> negative 24. Then you multiply this by I, you multiply this by J, you multiply this by K. This comes out to be 12, this comes out to be 8, this comes out to be negative 24. So your length of the vector is going to be 12 to square 8 square and 24 with the negative square. Now if you go through the actual calculations 
then you get a force which will be 360i, 240j, and 720k. And that should be in Newton. So if that's the force, then I should be able to write this equation. I mean, we need the action which is A, we add the force. Now, if I do that, then you get AX plus 360. And that's going to be times of I plus A Y plus 240, that times J plus <coughs> AZ minus 720 times of K. I mean, we just take the components from both sets of forces, add the two together, and <coughs> then multiply this by I, J, and K. This should all add up to zero. Now, for that equation to be zero, this whole thing should add up to zero. This whole thing should add up to zero. And this whole thing should add up to zero. So now one equation, which is in vectors, really gives you three more equations. Your first equation is AX plus 360. And that adds up to zero. Then you have A, Y plus 240. That adds up to zero. And A, Z minus 720. And that adds up to zero. <coughs> now, this equation here, I mean, if you notice this, this is really nothing but sum of the forces in x direction. I mean, all you're doing is you're taking the components in the x direction and you're adding it. Same thing here. <coughs> this is nothing but sum of all the components in y direction. Same thing here. This thing is really nothing but the sum of all the z components in the z direction. And <coughs> from this equation, you could find that A x is negative 360 newton. And you notice came out to be <coughs> negative. Same thing with this. Your A y comes out to be negative 240 newton. And your A z comes out to be 720 newton. <coughs> so this is negative, which means the direction you chose is not the correct direction. And if your axis x was going like this, then this here could be changed to positive 360 Newton. And your actual component will be opposite to that. Same thing here. <coughs> I could change this to positive 240 Newton. And this was y-axis. Your component is going to go opposite to the y-axis. Now, this remained positive. The direction it chose came out of exactly the same. So if this is the axis, then the component continues to go in the same direction. So in the beginning, we chose everything to be positive.